As they clean up here in Chicago and we process Vice President Harris's speech from last night, we can talk about this. Her goal, to define herself before Republicans have an opportunity to do the defining for her. And she laid out some of her big policy positions on the issue, some but not all and not always in that much detail. However, we spoke to delegates who told us they actually don't really need a detailed platform to feel that they already know exactly what she stands for. With so much support inside the convention, it's easy to forget that Kamala Harris was not the Democratic Party's first choice to take on Donald Trump in 2024. When did you become a supporter of Kamala Harris for president? Ah, uh, as soon as Joe said he wasn't going to go. Pretty much as soon as President Biden said we're going to line up behind her. For the first time since the 60s, delegates, including everyone we ran into at the United Center, How are you, Tony? I know you are, Tony. Are backing a candidate who didn't run in a single primary. This is new. That's new for everybody. It's new for Kamala. It's new for Joe. It's new for all of us. Um, is it odd? Yeah, but we live in odd times. The choice in this election could not be clearer. When Hillary Clinton ran for president in 2016, she had more than 200 different policy proposals. A level of detail Joe Biden matched with a 110 page policy pitch in 2020, both backed with lots of interviews. We have to bring the middle class back. We have to have a health care policy that makes sense. How are you doing, Hannah? Harris, by contrast, hasn't done a single major media interview or even added a policy section to her campaign website. And that's perfectly fine, at least for these Democratic delegates. Everything's happening really fast. Give her a minute and you'll hear everything that you need to hear. <laughs> they say voters already know exactly where she stands on reproductive rights. And she started rolling out some economic policies too. Beyond that, they're not worried. She has been at the White House for four years. She knows the policy. She's been doing on-the-job training for four years. That's the kicker. She's not going to move far off the policies where we are now if she moved at all as far as uh, uh, President Biden had. After all, she was his vice president. And yet... She's not going to take all the policies of the Biden administration, right? No. More than a third of Americans say they don't know where Kamala Harris stands. We will chart a new way forward. And when you get down to specific issues, Neither do a lot of the people who voted to nominate her. Energy policy, is she for all of the above? Is she for limiting oil and gas? What? Is she for all that? Okay. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You know, I, I think what we're looking at is trying to figure that out. What's her position on marijuana legalization? I'm waiting, I'm waiting to hear with you on the same on those issues. But whatever the policies of a potential Harris administration, Many folks here are certain they'll be better than the alternative. We can't go back to Trump. I think the values of democracy that I put time and effort to become a citizen to defend and protect, I feel that's an insult. What happened? So there's your number one policy. Can she beat Donald Trump? And you think yes. Hell yes. Okay. Kamala Harris! And some here even hope what's happening in Chicago is ultimately a model for campaigns of the future. What people are saying, well, she hasn't been out here long enough. Maybe our elections shouldn't run as long as they run. Making everybody get torn down, bitter, hateful, divisive. Maybe we need this to show us that we can do an election in three months, maybe six, over and done and everybody's good. Two points, of course, that I'd grant uh, on the Democrats' behalf is that the other side, well, they have put a mosh pit of policies together over the years about as fixed as a plate of jello. And then on the other hand, if she were to roll out all these detailed policies right away, that would be suspicious as well. Who wrote them? The reality is policy is hard. It takes time to get there. And ultimately, what these voters, these delegates told me is that they know she's going to have to work with Congress. It's not clear who's going to control those houses of Congress. And the reality is, if she has a, an idea of what her values are, shares it with the voters and tells you where she wants to go, the details are going to get worked out later. I'll send it back to you on that note. Uh, Tony, no one does these on-the-street interviews better than you. You connect with the people that you're talking to, and they share with you really, really illuminating and interesting details about how they're thinking. Uh, another job well done, my friend. Thank you very much. So.
Hey, Major. Tony doesn't need to introduce himself. He does obviously. not. He does I know, not. I know who you are. No Come on, let's talk. Tony let's Tony talk. Let's go. So, Major, I wanted to get your thoughts because you've covered so many mm -hmm. of these conventions over the course of your career. And I was thinking to myself about indelible moments of conventions past, where it, whether it was Donald Trump and Ted Cruz in that moment that Trump appeared sure. on the stage, or uh, George H.W. Bush, read my lips, the audacity of hope. It felt like this convention, we had multiple moments. We had the Obamas. We had Oprah. We had Tim Walz's family reacting mm -hmm. to him. How do you feel? So there was a constellation of moments that all reinforced one thing. Democrats now believe there is a possible victory ahead of them. They did not believe that in their gut when Joe Biden was leading the ticket. And the orientation of this convention and that speech last night clarifies one aspect of this campaign. Who is the challenger and who is the face of incumbency? Mm. Joe Biden was the face of incumbency until he dropped out. Kamala Harris, with that speech, said, I'm the challenger. I'm the new person, and I have to introduce myself, explain wh who I am, what I am, in a way that Bill Clinton did in 1992 when he was the challenger, Barack Obama did in 2008. She did not give the incumbent administrative speech. Mm. She gave, I'm the introducing speech. I'm the challenger. And this is what frustrates the Trump campaign so much. This arrow of incumbency, has not, which incumbency is not just a job title, it's a state of mind. And it shifted in Trump's direction. Trump is now the hyper-familiar face of American politics for now going on 10 years. And he's trying to get out of that. And this convention was a way for Harris to say, I'm the challenger, we have possibilities, there is something new. Major, real quick, if I could, how much of policy matters? Everyone sort of feels like, if you were at the RNC or the DNC, those are your people. But how much of the voting population is still on the fringe and they're just not sure? It does matter. In this election will be the first national presidential campaign post the end of Roe versus Wade. On that directional matter, Harris is clear, and I believe that will be the underlying most pivotal, most motivating issue in the country. Polls will be out in just a couple of days. We'll see if she gets a bump.